Last time on the Oakland A's Moneyball Rebuild. You're not buying into this Bill James bullshit, are you? This is the new direction of the Oakland A's. Our salary must at all times stay below $67.2 million. We'll be looking for an ERA under 4-2. For hitters, we are going to be looking for an on-base percentage above 346. Oh my god, we got number one, Luis Arias. If there is a player that is considered the perfect guy for this simulation, it is Luis Arias. And that should be deep enough. That is deep enough. That is a walk-off double for Ty France to extend the streak to 13 games. At this looks like it's Garcia. It is not. It is Mariano Villarreal. Villarreal, whatever you say it. We're taking Joe Garcia. We might have just found a generational prospect in this draft. Joe Garcia coming to the Oakland A's during one of our best seasons. Mason Miller with a chance to get a save, and he blows the save. That is going to be rough. I don't know if we're going to make it. We get swept by the Yankees in the second round. That Mason Miller blown save is probably going to be what kills us here. One of the reasons why I was attempting to try to make a big push last season at the end of the year is I knew we were going to be put in a position with some bad contracts coming up into this offseason. Looking at our budget right now, you can see we're actually in a bit of trouble. We're sitting at 80 million, which is $13 million more than we are allowed to spend right now. And one of the big reasons for this is this Luis Arias contract. I'm a big fan of Luis Arias, and I know that he's gonna do what we need to do for him. And the thing about the, his contract is it does do so well for us later in the year, but $13 million is gonna be a lot of money that we are gonna have to shed this year. So I think what we're going to be put into a position to do is trade a lot of longtime A's that I'm not really wanting to trade much of. First off, we have our pitching staff, which Flaherty's at 4.5, uh, Gray's up to 3.6, Pepio's up to 3, Soroka's still sitting at 4.5, and Sears up to 2. Um, obviously, we have some guys coming up soon here that could end up being pretty good in our pitching staff. Uh, obviously, not a guy like Waldachuk, who has not really performed. Um, but I think we're going to have to make some moves, dump some of the salary off of these guys. I don't know which ones I want to do. We're going to have to test and see the market to see which guys we want to move off of. Uh, it kind of sucks, but like a guy like Flaherty, who has really not uh, performed to the level that we want him to perform at, might be one of these guys that I want to move off of. And Soroka's still $4.5 million. I think these two were cool investments, but I'm not necessarily certain that $4.5 million is what they're worth. Another big contract we might have to move off of is this Tyler Hort Holton deal that we made at the deadline last season. Very good pitcher, uh, but I, we're going to need more money, and I don't know if I can really value $2.6 million as a relief pitcher in my bullpen, especially when I've got a guy here in Rydell Martinez who's got 780k. Uh, I think we can fill up our bullpen with some other guys, so uh, Holton will probably be moved. The one that's starting to get really big is this Mason Miller contract, but I, I, I feel like if this is an A's rebuild, you have to stick with Mason Miller. I don't want to lose him simply for the fact of money. I hope that we can keep him around. Uh, catcher position, McCann's starting to get a little pricey at 1.6, but he's performing so well that I feel like he's a guy that we have to stick around. 3.95 on base percentage last season is insane from the catcher position. Also hitting 3.28. This is a guy that we're just going to have to keep for now. I know we've got some guys here that are that are cheaper, that are coming up, um, that we should stick with and, and tend to move on from McCann. I just don't, I just don't see a way that we do that yet. Uh, Ty France is pretty expensive at 3.8 mi uh, million, but he's performed pretty well, hitting 290 last season with 18 home runs. So, like, do we move off of Ty France and just let Noda play entirely? Who, yeah, once again, Noda played very, very well last year, but these guys platooned, so I, I don't know how much of that is influence. Uh, Geloff is up to 2 million. He has not really performed very well. He might be moved uh, here in a second. Giorme has been playing very well. He's at $3 million, though. Am I going to... I think we still get the value here from him with uh, a, almost a 400 on base percentage from Luis Giorme. 
Murakami's cheap, so we're good there. Jacob Wilson, still on his rookie deal. I think Anderson. I'm actually really proud of this signing when you look at the on-base percentage. Yes, he has not played a, a whole lot, so it's a very small sample size. But if we're talking about recouping some value in, in this guy, Tim Anderson has gotten up to a 400 on base percentage and boosted his average. We might be able to trade him and get rid of this $1.7 million, which, to be honest, it's not really uh, worth keeping him around. We'll come back to Schwarber. Schwarber is a big deal here. Uh, Ruiz has got to go. $2.8 million. 324 on base. He's actually been really good this season, but he's got to go. Um, I don't see value in keeping him around uh, in this position. Rooker, love him. Uh, but he has been regressing season after season. Um, power is still there. He's still hitting a lot of home runs. But I think at $2.3 million and becoming an upcoming free agent this season, I think he's going to have to go. Uh, we did pick up Castellanos on a $1 million deal. Um, he gets on base a lot. Uh, slugs pretty well. Uh, so I was thinking we'd get him back. Brought back Janikowski. He is getting a little pricier, but he's been an embodiment of what we've been trying to do here uh, so far in this um, franchise so far. So we're kind of in a tough position. We're going to be making some moves. Um, the other one that is going to be kind of a harder deal to think of is going to be Kyle Schwarber. And one of the reasons for that, and I can't look at it right now, actually, but let's go back to, uh, Schwarber. Schwarber's $5 million. But when you talk about a guy who's making $5 million, that is an ex an extremely good value for a guy who ended up being the runner up last season in uh in the mvp race i don't know if if you would trade a guy who is the runner up for mvp just to clear cap but i also don't necessarily know if he's going to stay that way like we are getting better production than we are getting from the dollar amount of kyle schwarber but if we need to trim money could we get some prospects back in return? Schwarber will be one of the guys that I don't necessarily want to move because he has played so well for us right now, but uh, we might have to. And he might be a guy that maybe moves to first. I can see his secondary position as first base. Maybe he moves to first, and then we can move some of these outfielders up and, and try to make some moves there. But maybe maybe we move off of Ty France, who has played very well. Uh, and see what value we can get for Ty France, save the 3.8 million there, move Schwarber to first and have him play there, and just see what we can kind of do. We might move some positions around to save some cash, uh, but we're going to be calling up some of our minor leaguers too and uh, trying to rebuild this. So I'm going to go uh, figure out a way to shed $13 million in salary, and then I'll catch up with you once I make those moves. First move we're going to make is we're going to get off Ty France and Tyler Holton in order to try to save some cash. I uh, talked to two prospects in the Milwaukee Brewers, getting Angel Minoso and Tyler Black. Uh, also throwing in just another reliever down in the deal in order to try to get something. Uh, obviously, this saves us a good um, amount of money, but they're two prospects that are close to being major league level. Um, I think Tyler Black has already had a little bit of time up in the majors. If I look at his stats, uh, already used all of his options, so uh, we might... Might be in a little bit of trouble using Tyler Black, but I hope that he can be useful for us. So we're gonna make this deal save uh, a good uh, about five million dollars in this deal, five to five and a half. Next move we're gonna make is gonna get rid of Asturio Ruiz. Like I said, he has not really performed very well for us, so we're gonna move him and Tim Anderson to the Pirates, or yeah, to the Pirates. Get uh, the divisional rival of the. Brewers stack everybody up. Uh, they need a center fielder and a shortstop. They don't have anybody, and we're going to get a pitching prospect from them uh, and continue to cut a little bit more money. Next move we're going to make is we're going to get off Jack Flaherty. He just has not performed to the level who I've really wanted to. Now, here's the thing. I bet you that this next season he's going to come and burn us and hit like a two ERA in this deal, but it's what happens. If we got to shed money and he's not performing, he's the guy who's going to be out. So we're going to go talk to the Guardians and get a pitching prospect in Spencer Schwellenbach uh, from them in order to cut another $4 million of salary. So after finally getting ourselves back under budget and the $67 million budget that we have, uh, we have now a kind of a new look team going into this year. Now, last season, we got to 88 wins. Obviously, our target was 94 in order to be able to make a real run. And 88 wins got us into the playoffs. So we still need to get six more wins out of this. Uh, because of these adjustments that we've made, I don't necessarily know if we've gotten the right moves that we could. But I think we've made a few moves that 
will end up being good based on kind of our goals here. So the main thing that we did is we got rid of Flaherty and we put in Tom Koo, who contract wise, very cheap. So definitely a guy that I want to have in here. Um, and had a 3.66 ERA with uh, the Pirates last year. So might end up being a really good guy in this. Soroka got hurt in um, uh, preseason. He'll be fine. Uh, so pitching staff is still going to be pretty weak. It's basically now Gray and Pepio, the guys we traded for. Uh, Gray's on his last year. If things are going poorly for us at the deadline and we don't look like we're going to make a run again this year, uh, Gray will probably be out and we'll move him for something else. Uh, bullpen's the same. Picked up Landon Sims in the row five. Uh, simply, I just think his stats could possibly be useful. Uh, he has not played, and uh, he's cheap. So another big thing, having a, another cheap bullpen arm that maybe we could stick with for a little while. Uh, hopefully Mason Miller will continue his amazing run with his stats and everything. Uh, his ERA went down a little bit last year, but he had a bad stretch. So pitching rotation, slightly worse than last season, but I, I don't think we're in a bad spot. Now, the lineup, on the other hand, is a little bit different. We did not have to get rid of Rooker, so Rooker will be around for one more season. Uh, unless, once again, we get to the deadline and we have to move him. Uh, I just think there's a chance. There's a chance he could end up improving. I don't necessarily know if he will, but definitely against lefties, he is one of the better guys. And a guy who hits 30 home runs every year is uh, pretty good. Uh, other moves we made. We got Marcel Ozuna on a ridiculous deal here. $500,000 per year. Uh, yes, he is 36. But if you look at his numbers from the last few seasons, he has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and if I can get something out of him at the age 36, that's that's all we want. Same thing with Castellanos. It's the same idea. We're kind of calling up on the, on the Philadelphia Phillies here. Uh, in order to try to kind of build this roster up with some guys. Maybe Castellanos can get us some slugging, do a little bit. It, it's just a cheap deal, a $1 million deal there for us. Jankowski back again here. Hopefully another 370 on base percentage season for him. Uh, and we got to keep Schwarber. Now, Schwarber is one of these guys who, at the deadline, if we don't necessarily see a shot for us to make the playoffs, he will be out, guaranteed. He is too valuable. He will be gone if we can't find a position for him to go. So uh, this is our lineup going into this season. Uh, I think that we've got a few guys here that could end up performing pretty well, maybe taking some spots. And our minor league team is pretty good as well. Uh, with the big look this season on upcoming right fielder Joe Garcia, who is going to be an absolute stud for us. So uh, we're going to make some moves uh, ag again this season. Hopefully we uh, can just kind of continue. We are still the 24th ranked team. Our defense is now one of the worst defenses I've ever seen put together. But maybe with the contact and power, we'll still be able to produce enough, uh, enough, enough offense and our pitching staff can still kind of eke us through this season as we try to make another run at the playoffs, and hopefully this time actually make it to the championship series. So it's time for the MLB draft, 2027 draft. We're a little bit later this year. This isn't a top pick. We're sitting at pick 24. So a lot of my scouting this year was trying to just kind of get as many guys as possible. We actually have a very good farm system, probably one of the best farm systems in the majors right now. But uh, what guys that we actually want to draft and I don't necessarily know anymore. I think we're just kind of going to take some swings, um, see what type of players we want, because right now we have a lot of our future already in our system, whether it's guys that are under contract right now or a few of our prospects that are coming up. Uh, we're kind of in a position where a lot of the guys that we actually are looking into and the guys that uh, we have are our, our, our longer term uh, players now. Uh, I'm looking at prospects that just might uh, make the roster in a couple years or could once again, as we have kind of been moving, I think we're getting close to a position where we uh, are going to look at a lot of these prospects as how can we flip them at this point? How can we buy? What can we buy? How can we kind of, I guess, in a sense of this, how can we get MLB talent for our draft picks? Uh, I think we have a lot of guys here in our system right now that are AAA players that are 
right on the brink of actually being major league uh, prospects, but not necessarily guys that I think we are really going to stick with. Uh, there was one player in this draft. I think it's a first baseman uh, who was very, very good looking, probably generational talent uh, when I looked at him. But uh, there's that pitcher that was probably the top pitcher. But obviously, we're not in a position to draft that high this year. Peter House. That was the first baseman right there, Ruben Street. Maybe he wouldn't end up being that, but uh, he looked really good uh, if you look at those stats. Now, obviously, he could be. He could not be, but that's that's a ridiculous set of stats. Um, we're just going to sim to our pick. Uh, and I think... I don't necessarily like him as a top pick, but I do think he's the best guy. To be honest, my favorite guy right there is Derek Fagan. But I think we can get him with a second pick. So we're going to take Steven Albert with our first round pick. And then we are going to take Fagan because I want him more. Then we can get Kizada. Once just kind of a guy, not necessarily a, a guy that is going to be part of the program, part of the system. But all right. So those are those. Let's look at our uh, team rank. Crump is literally the highest guy on our team rank right now. But he's not ranked for other teams. So maybe we go take a swing at this guy, relief pitcher. Then we'll go... Uh, I don't even like Crump. To be honest, I like his velocity. I think he's more of a reliever. I don't think I'm going to take him. We're just going to take this random swing at Satchel Christian. And then I guess... This is going to be a bad draft. I can already tell you. Uh, we didn't have good picks. The scout When I was doing my scouting, I wasn't really finding guys that I really liked very much. So, uh, not necessarily a great draft. Uh, we are sitting right now at 54 and 41. We are actually doing pretty well. Uh, kind of, it's, it's a lot closer this year. A lot of the time for this season, we've been sitting somewhere in the middle in that third spot in the division. Third and second spot in the division. But I think we are actually in a position where we could win the division this year if our offense continues to play at the level it has. A lot of the big things here is how insane Brent Rooker has been playing. He's been averaging 30 home runs a season. He's at 26 at the midway point this season. Glad we didn't move off of him. He kind of returned back to his normal here and on base percentage and slugging. His OPS is all the way up. Like the bats are red hot. Guillaume started at this season just hit after hit. He's already at 98 hits this season, and that's as a platoon bat. He only faces righties, and he still has 98 hits. Uh, Arise, still a little bit worse than what um, you, I was kind of hoping for him. I was hoping for this, you know, 218 type hits every season, but, you know, you get what you get. Rooker, obviously great. Geloff, starting to kind of come into his own here. Good thing we didn't move off him. But uh, arbitration, he's going to get more expensive. Murakami, another great year. Tyler Black. Honestly, this 43 games here in Milwaukee kind of ruins this for me. Because this dude could win. He would be the leader of the Rookie of the Year race if he actually had rookie eligibility. Because he is hitting phenomenally right now. He has 48 RBIs. I think I looked... Um, and a couple of those stats ever after these games, I think he has four grand slams already this season. Uh, McCann hitting very well again, a little bit worse than last season, uh, a little bit down. Schwarber very well, uh, but obviously being outperformed by Brent Rooker uh, there. Ozuna, not actually that bad. Uh, he is regressing hard. He was hitting 300 earlier in the season, but uh, oh, Brent Harris probably got to go back down. Um, but we, we're doing pretty well. Jacob Wilson's not having a great season and, uh, and Jankowski's hurt. The, the big issue that we've had is our bullpen has been horrible. Even Mason Miller has not necessarily been great. He already has four blown saves this year. Um, our bullpen has been horrible. Our pitching staff is a little bit better. Tom Koo was a great pickup right there. Um, but our pitching is still pretty bad. It's actually improved from last season, but it's not necessarily 
in a great spot. Uh, I'm thinking, looking at our lineup and some of our prospects coming up, we have a lot of pitching prospects that are on the way that should be good here. Look, Schwellenbach is already probably MLB caliber. I just haven't brought him up because he's still not on the 40 man, meaning that I can save his contract for another season. Iwamara is uh, one of our draft picks that looks like he could be ready by next season. Art's been struggling a little bit. Kenny, I moved him up to AAA. He's been struggling since I moved him up to AAA, but he has been good otherwise. So a lot of our pitching prospects doing very, very well. Um, uh, I think the other one that I that people are going to have any interest in, uh, Minoso has been pretty good too, uh, is uh, Palma's been out. So have not seen our first round pick really for two seasons here, being able to really progress here with Palma. But uh, Joe Garcia, a little cold right now, but... 338 on base. I He's not coming up this year. I don't know if we'll bring him up next year. I think that might be the goal. Uh, it depends on what uh, we're looking at for this season, who we're going to bring back. I don't think we're going to be able to bring back Rooker. I think this is the best season we're going to get a Rooker, and then he's going to be gone. Um, Schwarber will probably be gone. So it might be time for Joe Garcia to come up next season as we need to refill our outfield with uh, players. Because... Guys like Denzel Clark will probably come up next season. Uh, and then I, I think Lawrence Butler could come up as well. We might be just be making moves in the offseason to try to get some outfielders uh, or moving some of our guys in, uh, in here out to the outfield. Say uh, Ryan Noda, who plays left field and right field, or even a Soderstrom, who could play left field and right field, could play a little bit out there, especially with our catchers in our system that we have right now. So... Right now, 54 and 41, uh, we're going to move into the deadline, uh, probably move some of our minor league guys, see what we can get, um, because this is we're going to contend here. Uh, this is actually going to be a season where I think we can make some moves, go for the division again, and hopefully make a run. I do think, standing-wise, the Phillies are insane, and I, I was seeing in the AL uh, East, I'm actually surprised the Orioles aren't doing better. They have the leader in the MVP, the Cy Young, and the batting title with uh, Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson, and Freddie Peralta. So the fact that they're not leading right now is kind of crazy to me. But uh, this is a, this might be our shot here. Uh, another season, I thought this was going to be a bad one, but um, we, we seem to be doing well despite having a very even plus minus and runs scored and runs allowed because our pitching and fielding have been so poor this season. So... Uh, we'll catch you with our signings, our draft day signings, and then also look at our pickups here in a second. I think we're about done with the Josiah Gray experiment. With him being on the last year of his deal with 3.6 million, I'm I I I can't really rely on this. He's three and ten this season and has played, pitched very poorly. So we're actually going to sell off Josiah Gray um, and get a pitching prospect that's not that bad, and then a uh, a relieving. Uh, pitcher uh, also throwing in Mitch Spence in the deal since he's a minor league player player who's uh, just kind of sitting there in our minors so we're gonna make this deal with the Diamondbacks get off of Josiah Gray and hopefully find a preferable replacement with a lower ERA in order to make up for that pitching gap by Josiah Gray, we're going to call the New York Yankees who are selling as they are not really a playoff team right now. Uh, and we're going to go try to steal Luis Aguil off of them, who has got a 2.86 ERA this season. Uh, we are going to throw in a couple pieces, main piece being Susak, and kind of get rid of these old guys who are regressing and no longer playing as well as they could have. And Ozuna and Castellanos, uh, who would fill out their lineup right now due to the just sheer amount of injuries the Yankees have on their lineup. So we're going to get Luis Gill four Susak and then a few outfielders that's going to open up a little bit of outfield positions so we are going to make a move for Andrew Benatendi which we thankfully have cleared up a little bit of cap space to be able to fill and get Benatendi on his expiring year of his deal for two prospects that will likely never make our system at least Gin and then Medina who uh, I no longer have the patience for So I think it's safe to say on the players that we went, we took some swings for some uh, guys that are going to be a little bit longer with Steven Albert being our top pick here. Nice 91 potential, but doesn't really look like a guy that's really ever going to play for us. Probably a guy that I'll actually move. Uh, Fagan, I actually like his stats a lot. I think he's going to outperform his rating really, really well. This is a guy who I want to kind of pin down as a potential player that we could use down in the future because I really like that hits per nine. But 
you never know that he's got to get that walks per nine up before we could ever use him. Uh, Quezada, another one of these guys that I don't know if we'll ever play for us. Uh, really looking at a lot of these players that I went and got. Christian is honestly the one who we could use. Uh, I like his lefty bat, but 65 potential, 70 rating. He didn't look good as I kept going. I like his stats, but he did not look good, um, but could still end up being useful in the lineup. Uh, for us so really not a good draft for us the one thing i want to check is i want to see if that first baseman ended up being oh wow 295 overall rated closers uh in the beginning i want to see if that first baseman that they took was not generational okay see now you know now we're aware uh they didn't get their first round pick um they didn't get half their draft uh they didn't get their first round pick so uh this might have been just a very weak draft oh wow uh that is an insane first baseman never saw him kind of uh, kind of mad i missed on him nick Quintero, uh peter house that was the second overall pick uh gauge like not none of these guys i i really scouted and looked or, you know or even really saw interested in any of them um it, it just looks like it was a pretty weak draft all around. That was a guy that I had scouted, I think. Um, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to draft him. Um, a Dickerson, I think, was somebody who I scouted, but knew I wouldn't be able to draft him because he would be gone by the time we got there. Uh, and that's that first overall pick who I liked a lot. But uh, just a, kind of a bad draft, honestly, all the way around. And I don't think we made a bad pick here. Uh, just a guy that will never really make our lineup. Uh, we have been on a slide as of late. If I look at the calendar, you'll see we have lost a lot of games in July. Um, oh, we, that's kind of why we made a few selling moves here. We did go get Benintendi, so we did a little bit of sell and a little bit of buy. Um, but yeah, we are in a, a rough spot here. Uh, we need to kind of pick it up. The Astros and Rangers are really competitive. Uh, wild card, we are still in it. But as you can see, it is a tight race for this wild card race. So we're going to have to play a little bit better um, for the rest of the season. Hopefully we can make a run uh, and attempt to just kind of make this wild card and pick ourselves back up because this has been pretty bad. I think if I look at the team rankings... Um, on base percentage, we spent most of the time up on the top, but I believe we're starting to dip down to seventh. Uh, still around where we need to be with that 346 rate. 342 is pretty good, but our, our pitching is still, um, still pretty bad here in uh, o Oakland. 28th in pitching in the league right now. So, uh, yeah, we're still struggling on the pitching side of things. Have not been able to figure that one out uh, with cheap pitchers, so... Hopefully soon we'll be able to make a good move, but we're going to try to just make our push for the playoffs for the rest of the season. We already have our lineup set for this season and uh, just see what we can do. Um, and we'll catch up around then, see if we end up making our actual push here. And just like that, another season, 88 and 74 for the back-to-back -back year. Uh, we're going to make the wild card once again, uh, kind of putting us in another tough position. Um, we once again have not hit our goal and what we were attempting to do based on this. And actually, if you look at the wild card, um, the fact that we won this is crazy. Great run at the very end of the season, eight and two in our last 10, while the Astros went four and six. Um, that is why we were in and not them. So, uh, and also the fact that this is a four way tie for the wild card, I think there's generally supposed to be a game. One uh, 63. Uh, I don't know if that's something that's in MLB The Show or if a three way tie or a four way tie allows for that. So um, we ended up getting right there with the um, uh, 88 and 74 season. Looks like we actually have some awards and league leaders this year. Uh, first, let's go to awards. Uh, MVP Brent Rooker. He hit 46 home runs, 110 RBIs. Honestly, this is probably Gunner's award. It should be Gunner's award, but we'll take that for Brent Rooker. Um, and actually, Ryan Pepio, I think, in his last outing, gave up six runs. Uh, and that kind of took away his chance for the Cy Young. But also, Jack Flaherty, who is exactly what I said. We would trade him away. And he would play better than what we have. Jack <laughs> Flaherty second to Cy Young with a 315 ERA. So uh, I, I guess I deserve it. 
Um, uh, the NL MVP, Acuna, takes it back again this year. Uh, as we move forward, Guillaume just misses out on the batting title, hitting 319. Uh, and then no reliever of the year race for us as Class A wins again. Um, and I think for awards, that should be it. Kansas City ended up having an insane season. Um, we actually played them at the end of the season. So Brent Rooker, Silver Slugger, nobody else up there in that extent. League leaders, just Brent Rooker. Guillaume missed out by like one hit uh, for the batting average or maybe two. Um, hits only Bobby Witt with 202, Juan Soto with 205, Acuna with 201, and Perdomo with 201 were the guys who got over 200 hits. Uh, if we go to Otani with a lot of triples this season. Home runs, Rooker 46 led the league in home runs, uh, Acuna 48 on the other side. Important one over here, uh, if we go to our saves. Uh, once again, we're not really in a competition. Bruce Dark Gratterall, though, 47 saves this season. He's been phenomenal. I guess he went to Kansas City, and they've been really good. Mason Miller with another 39, um, putting him in ninth for saves this year. ERA leader John Means, a guy who I was looking in free agency back here, didn't bring in. Honestly, should have. Uh, it's just... Uh, a lot of these times, I feel like I'm making the wrong decisions on these pitchers. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Because, like, Flaherty, for example, just continue to get worse. I bet that, like, I I wanted to, you know, stick with it. Stick with Flaherty. He should have been good. And then 315 ERA this season. Um, just, you know, way better than what I could have expected. Shane Boz was a guy who I wanted uh, to trade for, couldn't trade for. Um... ERA on this side, uh, nobody who I really even had a shot of, uh, of getting over here. So, um, if we go to our lineup, our rotation might be a little messed up. Mm, doesn't look too bad. I think the only one gone is, um, so let's go AAA. Sixto. Sixto, uh, 464 ERA, not very good this year. Soroka moved him to the bullpen second half of the season. 4-5 ERA, pretty decent. Uh, nice to have. Jacob Lopez pitched pretty well. Rydell got his ERA up to 3.56. Working nine Jarvis was pretty bad. Landon Sims, fantastic pickup. He's going to be cheap. We're going to hold on to him for a while. So uh, I think that was a good move in the offseason. Uh, Mason Miller, once again, just being a stud. Case per nine, way down. He he got his strikeout numbers, went, uh, went down a little bit here. Uh, ERA still pretty high, though, and, uh, you know, 39 saves for him. He's still only 28, so... Uh, a lot there. Uh, Luis Gill, his ERA went down from 2.6 to 3.75 uh, after we got him. Pepio was obviously in that Cy Young race. 4.19, uh, Sears 4.15, Koo, uh, Stewart. Honestly, our pitching staff doesn't look like it was as bad as it could have been. It was really, really bad at one point of the year, sitting at 28th. Um, so not as bad as it looked. Uh, let's go to AAA quick, make sure there's nobody here. I do want to check. Oh, you can't look at him. Jankowski, they moved him down here, but 3-4-6, uh, I think he's done. I think we have a team option. He's probably done for us. Tyler Black, why would they send Tyler Black down? He had a 335 average, hit 21 home runs. Absolutely great season. Uh, Brett Harris was horrible for us up at the majors, so uh, that's a guy who uh, will probably um, consider moving at, the, at some point here. I don't know if he's really got much of a shot. Uh, those two need to get sent down. So, Jacob Wilson, not a great season for him. Uh, 223, um, only nine home runs, 296 on base percentage. I'm not necessarily a big fan, which is crazy because he's a contact hitter. He should be getting on base a lot more than he is, and he is not. So, I uh, don't know what's up with him necessarily. Uh, hopefully, he'll play better next season uh, as we still have a couple years of team control over him. Uh, Noda. Uh, another 379 on base. He's been really, really good as a utility bat and um, as a platoon uh, left hitting a first baseman. Soderstrom, uh, pretty good year this year, 261. Uh, once again, kind of platooning. Uh, played 69 games, hit eight home runs in his position. Lawrence Butler, not enough at bats to uh, lead up. Giorme, 
another great season. Uh, 383 on base, second in the league in batting average with 155 hits. Luis Arias had a, had a down year here, hitting 265 for us this season. Um, did get his home runs up to 10, uh, 20, like just not a really good year for, for Luis Arias. Definitely not worth $13 million we're paying him right now. Uh, I am getting a little bit concerned with his lower production. He is getting kind of worse every year. Uh, I, I don't know necessarily what's up. I'm hoping that we can get kind of a, a, a flashback with him, just like we got with Rooker here. Rooker up to 46 home runs this year. Your MVP, Brent Rooker. Uh, we acted like we wanted an MVP season out of Schwarber last year. This time we got it from an actual A, Brent Rooker with 46 home runs. He is already up to uh, like 100 and yeah, that would make it 167 home runs with us in Oakland. Uh, and I'm just a great power bat to have. Uh, great slugging percentage, great on base. So love brent rooker sadly his contract's up i don't think we're gonna be able to re-sign him he will be somewhere next year so let's try to win a world series this year while we still got him get off actually showed up this year we were talking about maybe moving on from maybe moving on from him with the contracts but uh performed geloff was geloff uh not as much homers and not as much power as he used to have early on in his career but still looking really really good murakami uh, another just murakami season here for you just kind of the same thing he always does for us benintendi decent pickup for us 350 on base 20 home runs good uh mid-season pickup uh yes he will be a free agent but you know we traded two guys we weren't going to keep around uh, Schwarber in likely his last season for us, another 32 home runs. Uh, wasn't in the MVP race this year, but did a lot, uh, had, a, had a lot of power for us, 361. And McCann, once again, just a great season. Not as good as it was last year. His, his batting average did drop 50 points, um, but uh, I, I'm not I'm not that mad about it. He, he was really, really good for us this year. So uh, Kyle McCann, another great season for him. So we are going to look at who we are playing next uh this has kind of moved uh along far enough so that we should actually take a look at these rosters here so let's go look at the oak or er, at the orioles so starting pitching wise they have freddie peralta bradish grayson rodriguez tyler wells so we're probably going to see these three and they are pitching insane uh relief yes i know that they did end up trading away uh felix bautista uh, and, and honestly, I can see why they have really good stuff. Adley Rutschman, great year for him so far. Miguel Sano is their starting first baseman. Jackson Holiday, uh, not actually that great, uh, kind of underperforming there, uh, for them. And then Gunnar Henderson is Gunnar Henderson. He is really, really good, um, for them. Uh, still a pretty decent team all around. They've got three pretty much absolute studs. Uh, that is what we are going to be looking at going into this offseason. First, I need to go fix our lineups here and kind of move things around. So, uh, Swallow Back still will not come up. Sears is fine. Starting pitching was fine. Six Doe needs to come up. And. Black needs to come up because Norby needs to go down. And Troy needs to go down. That looks like it. Um, I think Jankowski, I guess we will move. Um, we will put Jankowski back on to the playoff roster and move Lawrence Butler down. Let's fix our lineup here. I think we have three righties in a row, so we just are going to go kind of best lineup possible. Um, I think that's going to be Tyler Black in that spot then. Uh, Soderstrom has not played as good as McCann. Uh, Schwarber is a little bit cold right now. I guess Jankowski should come in. But I just don't know where. You know what? I think we'll keep it like that. Geloff has been good. Um, Jankowski, uh, I think, can just be Jankowski. Unless we want to move. I don't want to take Schwarber out, actually, now that I think about it. I think this is our best lineup we're going to get here. I'm going to put against lefties, actually. Yeah, that's that's good. Tyler Black can come in and PDH against lefties. So, to the playoffs, calendar-wise. Let's go check. Simulate through the first game. Absolutely blown out. Luis Gill only makes it one inning. 
in the first game. Absolutely four runs in the first, set, two runs in the second. Uh, just Luis Gill gets killed. And Pepio loses. So that's a wild card run that does not get us anywhere. The Brewers defeat the Rangers in the World Series. The Milwaukee Brewers, 4-2. They defeat the Phillies, who ended up being one of the best lineups this year. I think if we look at the standings, Phillies won 105 games. So um, that was that. So let's go look at those awards. So your World Series MVP is Bryce Terang. And your two playoff MVPs are Corey Seager and Jackson Churio. As the Milwaukee Brewers win their first ever World Series, defeating the Texas Rangers. We are going to move to the offseason. Have to replace pretty much our entire uh, staff. And looks like no Hall of Fame inductees. So, sadly... No World Series for Brent Rucker here in Oakland. Um, we are going to make our moves. I think it might be time to start calling up some of our guys, uh, fill, fill in our staff, and we um, we reset once again for our Moneyball A's rebuild. Braves still have a million pitchers, so uh, looks like they have AJ Smith Shaver on the trade deadline. So, or not on the trade block, not trade deadline, trade block. So we're gonna go make a move for Smith Shaver in the off season, getting rid of Brent Harris, Schumann, and Perkins, guys who I just don't want to use anymore. We're gonna call the Dodgers do the same thing, pick up another pitching prospect in Nick Frasso, who I also don't think that they are ever gonna use. He is currently the ninth guy in their rotation as they have made a bunch of moves. So we're gonna call for Nick Frasso uh, and trade a couple pieces once again that we just have no desire of using in Armamentoris, Cartillo, or Car Carrillo, Carrillo, and Rodriguez. I think we're a year or two away and the Orioles have Grayson Rodriguez on the block, so we're going to make a call and get an ace pitcher because pitching has been our biggest weakness. He has not been fantastic, but I mean, it's Grayson Rodriguez. It's a potential ace. Might not seem the most realistic, but also the Orioles did just lose Adley. They lost a lot of guys in their lineups. So this might be a minor rebuild for them. So we are going to trade the runner up for the Cy Young. Ryan Pepio, or third place, and one of our top pitcher prospects, Oliver Smith, for Grayson Rodriguez, and have an ace. In order to make up for that deal, we need to move a little bit of money, so Soroka sadly has to go. Uh, had a decent season last year, but he's got to go, and we are going to go call uh, the Brewers and trade in another one of those pitcher prospects, Steve Russ, for another former Oriole, D.L. Hall. We're also going to move off J.P. Sears, continue to consolidate some pitching talent and movie and money he's got an expiring deal 2.6 million dollars so we're going to call the raise for some pitching prospects and consolidate a little bit more of our content and we're also going to move starting pitcher carter stewart we just have too many pitchers uh and we're going to move him uh for more uh pitching prospects from the white Sox. get them a starter while uh we move that also throwing in jonathan kelly one of the draft picks we made that i don't think will ever pitch for us so figured we move him over to a different team the year is 2028. It has been several years already into our rebuild, and I think it's finally time that we are going to actually take a dive in to make a real run. For the first time, we are in a non-bottom 10 ranked team uh, as we are going to finally start to make some changes and start to move forward with our farm system. So first things first, before I get into any of our lineup and rotation stuff, I do want to look at the farm system because I did kind of skip past that last season. One of the things about our farm system and our top prospects is we have one of the deepest farm organizations in the entire MLB. We have the top ranked prospect, Kenny James, is sitting here at 10th. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 prospects in the top 100. That is way more than anybody else. And that's even including some guys that were considered really, really good prospects for us. Mark Palma was a first overall pick for us early on in the 
in our drafts. He was our, I believe, 2022 first round pick, or 2024, five, 2025, our second year first round pick. Uh, and he's still considered our 15th ranked prospect in our system. I actually think he could come up this season and still perform. So our farm system is absolutely loaded right now. And that's even including all those deals that we just made in the off season, trying to flip players and start to consolidate our talent because of this. And knowing that our farm system is getting really, really close. You can see a lot of those ETAs are within the next three seasons, 2028, 2028, 2028, 2028. These two are 2030. These are the guys that we just drafted this past year, but majority of these guys should come up in the next two seasons. Because of this, we start. We need to kind of uh, adjust our lineup and our plans for this season and next season when we talk about our veterans. We don't want to block anybody, and we also don't want to put ourselves into a position where we're not, uh, where we're bringing somebody in too early. So, in order to balance that, one of my ideas for this season was to try and move our guys so that we would have guys with two years of contracts left. That ended up being that Grayson. Rodriguez deal and the DL Hall deal, but that's how our pitching rotation is going to look like this going into this season. Grayson Rodriguez has two years left on his deal. DL Hall, two years left on his deal. Luis Gill, two years left on his deal. Smith Salver has five. Ku has five. Frasso has five. So we're actually in a position where these three, our top end of our rotation, have two seasons that we can win with. So we have our ace, Grayson Rodriguez, for two years that we are going to attempt to make a run for. When it comes to our bullpen, we also have two years left of Mason Miller. I will be honest, as soon as that contract comes up with arbitration, there is absolutely no way we will be able to keep him. He has been phenomenal for us. 168 saves already in his career. Uh, he will continue to perform for a while yet. But we went out and got some more guys. We got this closer from the White Sox, and we have some other guys sitting in our AAA. So our bullpen is going to look like this this year with a bunch of guys that have performed. Grabbed this guy simply because his contract deal. Uh, we might DFA him or move him down simply because our AAA has a lot of guys. Schwellenbeck, honestly, could come up this year. Iwamara should come up soon. Uh, Blackburn and James are some of the top pitching prospects in all of baseball. I still don't think uh, James is ready at all, but... Uh, he's up to the triple A and he's still the 10th uh, ranked prospect in baseball. And we still have Landon Sims who had a 216 ERA right here. So, uh, and then we have Tim Lawrence, one of those pick prospects we got from the Rays. So we have a lot of guys and that's not even including another first round pick down here in Julio Juarez as a pick here. So we have a lot of guys in our pitching rotation that we need to consider. But our lineups, we still made some moves in order to get some veteran talent because, well, I think we need to make a shot this year and next year uh, to stay within our budget constraints before things are going to get expensive. So, same kind of bench, guys. Uh, Jacob Wilson's going to move to the bench, uh, do platoon, only hit lefties. Tommy Troy needs to come up because he's out of options. Uh, Ryan Noda right here uh still kind of playing this first base only lefties uh he's he's been really good so uh, like i've had no reason to kind of move off from him but this will be the last season with ryan nota soderstrom has been very good uh glad we went with him over langoliers but uh in our lineup you'll notice that we made a few changes simply due to uh the constraints that we were faced with our rotation so guillermo i brought back Got him on a pretty cheap deal uh, in order to bring him back after his phenomenal season last year. So Guillaume will continue to play here in Oakland. Nobody else seemed to want him. Luis Arias's deal keeps getting cheaper. So Arias will continue to hopefully outperform what he did last season uh, and, and be that. Uh, Geloff is still here. McCann is still kind of our top catcher. Uh, and Black will take the first base spot for the righties while Noda does lefties. Now, the few additions you can see that we made is we went on out and got Byron Buxton. He was very cheap, $4 million a year. Uh, it's a little bit of an overpay. Uh, when you talk about um, a lot of the the constraints that you're supposed to follow in a money bill, ball st style rebuild, technically a guy like Buxton should not fall in this. However, my thought with Buxton is we can move him at the deadline if he doesn't end up performing simply because we do have outfielders and depth that will be able to take his spot if we don't like him. We also have a team option, but 
it's a top end free agent. That's a type of guy you want to be able to bring in and see if he can perform or not. Uh, if you think about this and look at last season, uh, Brent Rooker was also similar numbers as Buxton was this past year. Not the home run depth, obviously, but uh, the just on base percentage and average. And he ended up having a fantastic year for us this past season. So Buxton coming in. Uh, another one that I want was a utility hitter, Brendan Donovan. He gets on base a lot. Doesn't hit our numbers specifically, but he's very, very close. Uh, just a really good a guy. And then we also need outfielders because we only have one uh, really main prospect in the outfield. So we signed him long term, $5 million a year for the next five years. Once again, this is a deal that I can move if I don't necessarily want him. But he's just going to be a guy that gets on base for us. The big one is Joe Garcia is going to be coming up this season. Simply, I, I would have liked to wait one more year, but it just makes too much sense to just play him now. $100,000 this year. He's going to be really cheap. Just keep him on. Let him play. Um, and then hopefully he will perform really, really well. Get himself a rookie of the year, which will give us a PPI award and give us another high-end first-round pick. Something that maybe we can consolidate. But Garcia is going to be the future. This is the guy we're building around. So uh, when we're talking about that, uh, that is the guy that we have. Sadly, you'll notice we don't have Brent Rooker. And now we've been gutted. Like organ donors for the rich. Boston's taking our kidneys. Yankees taking our heart. In Houston, they went out and got Brent Rooker from us. So uh, hopefully he can regress back down to this for us. Uh, not likely. I, honestly, Rooker just had a fantastic year. I couldn't afford him. So... They paid him $9 million or $8 million a year. I technically could have, but I think the money was better spent on the combination of Brendan Donovan and Byron Buxton instead of the money spent only on Brent Rooker. The Boston Red Sox see Johnny Damon and they see a star who's worth $7.5 million a year. When I see Johnny Damon, what I see is, is an imperfect understanding of where runs come. The guy's got a great glove. He's a decent leadoff hitter. He can steal bases, but is he worth the seven and a half million dollars a year that the Boston Red Sox are going with? No. So, going into this next season, we will uh, continue uh, to try to develop here. We are going to make our shot at the division this year, I think. I think this is the year that we can win this division, uh, but we have to. Very soon here, we are going to have to make the run. Uh, we are the 12th ranked team in baseball, one of the best hitting teams in baseball. This is our shot. We finally have decent pitching. We are going to make a run, and then hopefully then we will have a good setup for the future. So we're going to get into this season and see how things go, and hopefully Joe Garcia ends up being an absolute stud and wins a rookie of the year for us and an MVP at the same time. Pull an intro for us. It's time once again to start the draft. This is going to be a late pick again, pick 21 after we made the wild card last season. Um, didn't really seem like there was a lot of top end prospects in this one. A lot of the positions that I wanted is where the top end prospects were, but uh, we're kind of going to see uh, what ended up actually being available. That was actually one of my favorite left fielders right there, Brian Bonilla, but didn't expect to get him with pick 21. Uh, so we just kind of took some swings at some discovery uh, later on. There were a lot of outfielders in this draft, and I was hoping that we could get one just to kind of fill up our outfield. We do have some prospects, but as outfield goes pick one, two, three, um, we just kind of going to have to hope. Steve Conrad looked like the best, didn't even scout him. He went fifth in this draft. Um, doesn't really look like we missed out on too much. I think one of the guys that I wanted here, Jackie Elridge, uh, got picked. But one of my favorite prospects in this class. Uh, oh, actually, did he go? Maybe I missed him. Alex Padilla. This was the guy who I wanted the most. Alex Padilla. Shortstop. Sadly, he goes a couple picks before us to the Miami Marlins. So, I, I I thought that I thought that I got lucky, and then we didn't lose out on him. But uh, it looks like we did. So, I think with that in mind, we're probably just going to take one of the top pitching prospects uh, in this class. Uh, I'm going to look at the top uh, ranked guys, see if there's anybody who I may not have scouted who looks interesting. But nope. 
power shortstop bat. Uh, don't want to take the risk on that if nobody else did. So I think we're just going to go with Shade Day um, and just get another pitching prospect into our system. To our next pick, um, looks like some of the other guys that I liked are gone, especially that reliever. Jesse Balk is still there. These two, Meeks and Bike, are going to be my third round picks. Uh, so we're going to see if any of these other guys, Bautista ends up being pretty decent here, it looks like. Or maybe we just take them. Bike's going to end up being really good. Uh, yeah. I don't want to lose out on him. He's going to be really good. So I think we're just going to take Bike right here. Or Bake or whatever. I just don't want to lose out on that kind of t prospect there. Team rank. Uh, still really nothing interesting. I think we'll just take Bulk here. And then we'll take Meeks with the next pick. Oh. Meeks was gone. Sometimes you think you can get a little cocky with these non-ranked players. And uh, that just seems to have bought uh, bit me. So I didn't get Meeks. That's my own fault. Uh, team rank guys, we have two more left here. Spasato, who will never play for us because he's a, such a low rank. And Zambrano, who might play for us. So we'll draft Zambrano. Uh, fifth round pick, so we have two more picks. I think we'll just take Almanzar. And Jay Justice. Sadly, we missed out on Meeks there, but it is what it is. Uh, if we take a look here at our team, uh, we are having an off year. We're only six games out right now for the division. Uh, it's actually a very, very close race out here in the West, so we still have a shot, but... Uh, we're having a bad year. If we go look at our stats for our team rankings right now, we have been pretty regularly for the last several seasons been ranked in the top five and on base percentage. But uh, very important to note, we're 19th now this season. Uh, our bats are dead. Um, our ERA, as usual, still one of the worst in the league, 26th. It is dead. And, and some of those reasons are uh, those moves that we made in the offseason and the pitching staff just did not work. Deal Hall and Grayson Rodriguez, those two pickups that I thought would help make ourselves a run, has not helped. Luis Gill has regressed. Somehow, in whatever world that we are in, these top-ranked pitchers, a 90 overall here, an 84, and an 86, are awful for us. It's like every person that we bring in, I'm actually going to put Frosso back in the rotation, um... But every pitcher that we bring in in the starting rotation is just terrible. Uh, I don't necessarily know why. I can't seem to figure it out. Uh, it just continuously happens that when we get guys, they end up being pretty bad for us. And I was looking earlier in the year. Now, he might have fallen off. I wanted to go look. Uh, Soroka, once again, bites us by a 2.8 ERA from Mike Soroka. So whatever we are doing with our pitching is there's something wrong here because DL Hall was de was decent with the Brewers. We traded them for Soroka, who is a much worse pitcher, uh, and Soroka now has a 2.80 ERA. Um, Tyler Holden over here, 2.72. Obviously, we couldn't afford Holden, but like, it's it's kind of getting on my nerves in the sense of like, why can we not figure this out? Why can we not get? Um, these pitchers right, and I bet if I look at Pepio, 362. He's also outperforming Grayson Rodriguez. So, um, something wrong with our pitching. We just can't seem to figure this out. Signings wise, Brennan Donovan's playing really, really well. Uh, Luis Guillorme still gets on base a good amount, but he is regressing pretty bad. Um, we have his team option. Probably not going to accept that next year. Uh, Arias is back at the normal. Garcia's been playing well. Um, the big thing has been Geloff has regressed hardcore. Uh, Murakami is actually hot right now, so he's coming back, but he he's looked like he's way worse. Tyler Black has regressed back to himself. Um, and actually, Buxton was a good investment, too. So the two signings we made for offensive-wise have, have been good uh, additions. These two have followed our rules. When you make signings in Moneyball, the goal is to try to replace the on-base percentage in the aggregate. And Donovan and Buxton have done so, in addition to 
Garcia, they have done so, but the rest of our current guys have just gotten so much worse. So um, I think we might be selling uh, a few pieces. I might see what I can get for Grayson Rodriguez, but we're also only six games out. I just don't necessarily know if we are going to be able to get there with what we have. Um, we have a lot of prospects coming up who I think are just going to be ready next year. We might just have to sell and uh, move on to next season. So um, we'll see what we can do at the deadline and see if we can get any interesting pieces uh, if we are going to sell off here, if we don't go on a run or anything by the end of the month. Buying and selling at the same time, say goodbye to DL Hall, as well as prospect Max Muncy, who is never going to make it on our team. Uh, we're, we're getting Colson Montgomery. Uh, well, another draft passes. Uh, honestly, not that bad when you think about like the, pro the potential ratings of all these guys that we got. Shea Day, David Bake, um, Bake, Bike, whatever. Uh, it's from Chinese type, type I don't necessarily know how to pronounce that. Bike. Uh, Jesse Bog, but if you look at the skill sets of these guys, I don't think a single one of them plays for us besides maybe Zambrano. They could, but uh, very good chance we end up trading all these guys. Jay Justice, actually quite good. Uh, he won't play till he's 30, but, uh, you know, has some potential there. He's a switch hitting catcher. It might just be a guy we trade. Um, looking around, I wanted to look at some of those... Uh, there's Padilla. That was the shortstop I wanted. Dude would have been a beast for us. Probably could have come up in like a season or two uh, for us. Uh, but drafted before that. Vargas right there. Wow. Okay. They drafted very, very well. Um, definitely got some guys that I missed on. Great draft for the Phillies. Okay. Uh would not have expected that. That was the second overall pick, Roderick Sutton. Good thing he was a he was a miss for us. Uh, nothing here that we were looking at. I don't think there's actually a lot of guys in this. Brewers don't get their first round pick. Um, kind of looked at that guy. He didn't look that good, but I guess he was. Robert Olson, interesting right there. There's a top closer. Conrad was generational talent. Fell down to sixth overall pick. That's kind of crazy uh, when you think about it. But good for the Orioles getting a generational talent with a sixth overall pick. Uh, Proville, Dodgers got him. Uh, that was a good catcher. Did not see him uh, being as good. That was the first overall pick. Ooh, would have loved him by his stats. Dude could have played next season and been absolutely phenomenal for us. And Meeks, too. I didn't realize the Padres got both the guys that we liked. Ugh, they were both good. I feel like I, I I messed up on not drafting Meeks in this draft. Um, otherwise, doesn't really look like anything crazy. Alberto Samuels, uh, another first-round pick that was missed there. Dan Clark, third baseman. They drafted uh, pretty well there, too. Uh, big miss for the Tigers. Um, Eldridge was the other guy I liked at the top end of the draft. But, um, yeah, I mean, Shea Day, not a bad pick. Uh, right now we are eight games under. I made the buy for Montgomery, just selling off uh, DL Hall, but uh, I don't, I don't see us making the playoffs this year. So I think we're just gonna kind of try to be in a position to see if our guys can perform, do some good stuff, and then in the off season we'll have to make some moves. But I don't think we're gonna make the playoffs. It's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. No. Yep. Seems about right. Somehow this season. We end up making the wild card. 83 and 79. This is the first time we were above 500 for the entire season. Uh, if we look at the calendar at the end, we went on a nine game win streak at the end of the season in order to make the playoffs. Uh, just great runs fueled by Brendan Donovan and Luis Arias. Luis Arias at one point had a 29 game hit streak and Brennan Donovan had a 15-game hint streak, uh, and it just fueled us into a position where somehow our offense finally picked up near the end of the season. Luckily, this happened to be a year where uh, we you didn't need to be very good um, in order to make the playoffs. So looking at that wild card, I mean, the Astros made it four games below at 79 and 83 uh, with a a few way tie there in in this sense of like it, it it's kind of crazy to me that this is ended up how it ended up being um 
the AL was just uh, our was was pretty weak. It was pretty much dominated by some top teams there, uh, and it was a pretty balanced year all the way around. Uh, so we are going to be in the playoffs this year, playing Boston in the first round uh, as actually the number one. So we have home field advantage uh, going into this season. So uh, AL Rookie of the Year, Joe Garcia, and batting title winner, Brendan Donovan. So uh, MVPs go to Riley Green and Ozzy Albies on the other side. So another Brave gets an MVP. Cy Young goes to Christian Javier with a 296 ERA. Uh, and then uh, Max Fried on the other side uh, for the Braves. Brennan Donovan wins the batting title with a 326 average uh, over Jordan Alvarez, uh, just squeaking him out at the end of the season. Uh, and as we move forward, uh, Joe Garcia also with the Rookie of the Year hitting 294 um, for him. Uh, if we were to go a little bit further, just to check all the rest of them, uh, we do have Byron Buxton third in Gold Glove. Colson Montgomery ends up winning the Silver Slugger for us at DH. And I did see for a while Arias was in that race, but he must have lost out uh, just from position eligibility um, for the Silver Slugger in that position. If we go to league leaders, Nick Frasso, innings eater, uh, most innings pitched in the league, and Brennan Donovan with the batting average. So... Uh, very good season for Brendan Donovan. Uh, nobody in the league gets 200 hits. This was a pretty down year offensively across the league. Uh, at bat, or if we go to, that was actually Jordan Westberg was a guy I was going to consider trading for, um, but uh, did not trade for him. Honestly, it would it was a large package in order to get him. Uh, so makes sense. League leader in home runs this year was Aaron Judge. I think offense just around the entire league was down this season. Uh, if we look at that, the batting averages were down, the home runs were down, doubles and all of that were down. On base percentage was down as well. Uh, saves, uh, I will say this, you're not going to see. Somehow Mason Miller ends up fourth in saves. He was horrible this season, so uh, I'm not even that mad at the idea that we're going to be losing him soon. It sucks that he ended up being bad, but he just caught the virus that is our team. Um, if we go to our, our pitching rotation, uh, looks like they left everybody here, so uh, not that bad. 5-1-4 ERA uh, for him, eight blown saves. I'm, uh, Mason Miller just was, was pretty bad this season. Um, his strikeouts continue to go down. His whip continues to go up. He just had a really bad year uh, for us. So... Uh, I mean, with those eight blown saves, if he doesn't blow those, if he even goes back down to his average of like four, uh, we comfortably are a wild card team. So Mason Miller kind of uh, had a bad season for us here, and that was what put us in this position. But the rest of our bullpen, uh, actually pretty good. Uh, Steven Cruz uh, was a little bit rough. He actually started off very, very well, but I think he just picked up a lot of the innings. Uh, in this and Sixto uh, actually got his uh, average down. He's he's looking pretty good as, as a bullpen arm here. Tom Koo over there, good too. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez dropped himself back down to 4.35 ERA over the season, so I'm kind of glad we stuck with him. Uh, Shaver was our best throughout the year, but Frasso actually uh, 3 3 7 1 ERA just was a great, uh, great guy to have. Uh, pitched in 52 games for us because he started on the bench and then started 23 games as well. So he was very, very good. Schwellenbeck came up, wasn't that great, 502 ERA, but honestly, I'm not even that upset about that rotation for us. I think statistically, if we were to go look at our team rankings, this might be one of our better ERA seasons. Uh, even though it's still going to be below average. We're 24th. Oh, great. Yay. 24th. Uh, it's still significantly better than we've had. Uh, if we go to our lineups, let's go to AAA first, make sure that they didn't send anybody down. Uh, Guillaume, still uh, decent. Move him to a DH role uh, this season as he just kind of got worse. 3-8 uh, on base percentage, 277 average. Uh, obviously not as good as last year. We might even keep him around um, for the next season. He's regressing, but... Had a good year. Uh, we'll see because we've got a lot of guys that we have to call up here. Uh, Tommy Troy, decent for his first season for his rookie year. Just basically being on the bench. Uh, we'll call him up in a second in order to bring him up. But, uh, yeah, not bad from the guys that we had up uh, at, at the major league level. I think we got to send these two back down. Uh, but 
Geloff had a down year. His walks numbers are up. He's, I mean, he's getting walked more. Obviously not actual up, but he also was had a lot less at bats. But uh, he is getting on base more from walks, but he his hitting numbers, his slugging percentage way down. He just did not have a very powerful bat this year. Wasn't really worth it for us. Um, Jacob Wilson started off very slow this season, so we kind of moved him to a platoon role. That was actually why we went out and got Colson Montgomery. But uh, decent 319 on base, actually still improving, uh, getting better. Uh, looks more like his rookie year Jacob Wilson than we had. Kyle McCann, um, just a down year for him entirely. Just did not look very good this season. Um, you can see he regressed potential-wise. Just doesn't look like he is going to end up being a big future piece for us. We'll probably trade him in the offseason. Uh, to the lineup, uh, I think I have to call, I have to bring up uh, a Guillaume quick, but uh, Brennan Donovan, 326 ERA, looked phenomenal for us this season. 22 home runs. Uh, that, that's a career high for him. I mean, he had 20 last season, so pretty close, but 326 average, 387 on base. He, he was really, really good for us this season. Colson Montgomery, uh, 351 on base. He ended up having a career year for us too, 27 home runs, even though it was only half the season. It was a great pickup. Uh, Luis Arias, looking back to his normal self, hitting 299, um, a 362 on base. So had a down year last year, but he's back. His power numbers are still going up as he continues to improve uh, on the base path or on uh with with the bat in his hands uh good rookie season for joe garcia 16 home runs uh 254 average uh soderstrom kind of took the spot from mccann i think mccann will be gone so uh soderstrom taking his place uh murakami started off pretty poorly honestly a down year from uh, murakami for us but uh 27 home runs a little bit more power for him buxton a very good year for him 27 home runs starting to kind of come back to his normal uh for us with with that power uh, returning and getting on base a lot. Uh, I think that was a very good addition and we still have him for another year uh, with a $4 million deal. And Tyler Black kind of got himself back up to where he is supposed to be. So we're going to go quick and uh, fix our lineup for a second. And then we'll take a look at our Boston Red Sox, our first opponents. Boston Red Sox are going to hit us with a pretty traditional uh, lineup for themselves. They have Jaron Duran still here uh, at the top of their lineup. They still have Rafael Devers. Marcelo Myers finally up, though he's not that great. Uh, Rafaela is is still up, uh, playing very, very well uh, for them for the last several years. But uh, down year for them. So a little offensively, they look a little bit weaker than what they have. Uh, but I think their strength is actually in their pitching rotation, uh, where they have Brian Bayo. Tanner Houck, Whitlock, John Means, um, Jeffrey Springs. They have a lot of guys here that uh, just they've got a better pitching staff than we do. So uh, we're going to try and see what we can do lineup wise. I brought Guillaume back in and we're just going to hope that uh, this can be our year. We can take care of Boston uh, with this. So we're going to go into our calendar. We're going to sim through the first game. Oh, I actually need to uh, replace one of my pitchers. I think what we're going to do is we are going to send Sims down. Even though he was very, very good for us. Then we're going to send Sims down and we're going to call back up. I think we're going to call up Otto Lopez because he can play the most positions. And we're going to send Sims down. All right. So a good win for Grayson Rodriguez. First game of the, se of the series right here. Scored nine runs in the second and the third. Thanks to a home run from Brendan Donovan, Colson Montgomery, and Joe Garcia. Uh, and then in game two with Chauver on the line. Great. We lost Brendan Donovan. And Chauver loses the game. Box score wise. Looks like we just kind of death by a thousand cuts against them as we lost Donovan in the fifth. Well, that's going to change things as we don't have Brennan Donovan going into this game. Um, so we are going to have to hope for the best. I think Arias is going to come up there. I'm going to have Geloff play against righties. And in this case, uh, I do think it is best if we have Otto Lopez up. So... If we lose because we lost, 
I'm going to be really upset if that's why we lose this. So we are going to go in. Uh, we're going to quick manage this as we attempt to win this next one here and try to get through our first round of the playoffs. Let's play ball. Three. Frasso somehow gets to the first inning. Ball four. Take your base. Three. Frasso is not Three. necessarily making me very confident. And uh, my lack Three. of confidence might be right Three. there as he gives up a run. Uh, Luis Arias is playing well here, but uh, I think I'm already going to move out of uh, Frasso. He, I just have no confidence in him right now. We are going to take him out. Thanks for a double for Luis Guillorme. Tied it up. Schwellenbach gets through that. Luis Arias walks. Schwellenbach is up. I think we are going to do another pitching change and go to Lopez, as we have a bunch of lefties in a row here. Okay. Get through that inning. Joe Garcia. And Soderstrom with a two-run home run to give us a 3-1 lead. That could be big. As Lopez makes it through another inning. And Luis Arias with a solo home run. That makes it a 4-1 lead for Colson Montgomery. We are going to make another pitching change here. We are going to bring in... Uh, Daniel Stewart to pitch this inning as we get through that Garcia gets on Soderstrom gets on bases loaded for Byron Buxton grand slam Byron Buxton 8-1 lead Stewart should be able to close this out as we are going to advance to the divisional series Mariners are our divisional rival. They actually haven't been very good for most of this uh, franchise save as their offense has been pretty weak. Uh, but they this year and this past two seasons, they got Randy Rosarena uh, and Julio. So they also went out and got Ryan McMahon, kind of improving their offense. They finally actually have something decent out here on the offensive side of the game because uh, their pitching staff has been phenomenal for them this entire time, as normally if anybody has played a couple seasons in MLB The Show. They have a fantastic farm system. So Gilbert, Kirby, Miller, Castillo, Wu. We are going to have to do our best to try to get past them. So uh, first game, we're going to have Tom Koo against Logan Gilbert. We lose that game 3-5. to five. Uh, Just they scored all their runs in the beginning, and we couldn't make the comeback. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez is going to pitch in game two. Uh, I'm actually going to... I think I'm going to jump into this one just because I want to see. I'm only going to hit this once for Luis Guillorme, see if we can do it. I, I just want to I want to get through here. I think this is actually our shot. And a pop out. Drop us to down 2-0 against the Seattle Mariners as Grayson Rodriguez loses that game giving up four runs in five innings. And things just continue to not necessarily look very good for this Oakland A's roster. Game three, we happen to win that. Daniel Stewart wins it at the very end. Box score. Looks like we won uh, in the eighth with a nice three runs there. Um, I think we have to uh, jump in and probably quick manage the next game here. So, we're going to quick manage. Frosso's going to pitch. Play ball. Ball four. Take your base. Oh, that's a great start for Nick Frosso. Um, giving up four. three runs in the first. Ball four. Take your base. Five runs in the first for Nick Frosso. Um, all right. That's a great start. I am lacking confidence in regards to our team to be able to put up five runs of offense here. I'm going to make a pitching change. We're going to throw in Schwellenbeck. As we struggle there, give up eight runs there with Schwellenbeck. Yeah, this is over for us. As we lose in four games to the Mariners 
and that ends our next run here. Kind of a kind of a, a miracle run to even be in this position at all. Uh, and the Twins defeat the Braves in the 2028 World Series uh, as they take out Seattle. If we go look at the awards for this, um, looks like the World Series MVP was rookie shortstop Brooks Lee. Um, postseason MVPs were Matt Olson and Royce Lewis as they take it home in 2028 in seven games. All right, we're going to advance, and I think this is probably our shot here. Uh, this is starting to go a little longer than I would have liked uh, for a rebuild. Obviously, we did start with next to nothing, but uh, it's starting to take a little bit longer here as we are going to move into 2029 and attempt to finally win an actual World Series with the Oakland Athletics. We need to trim the fat. Brian De La Cruz is available. He has uh, been very, very good. Uh, and we're going to trim some fat of our roster, get Brian De La Cruz. Technically, I was offered Wyatt Langford for this same package, uh, but I feel like that's a little broken, so we'll just take Brian De La Cruz. Well, that number's a little too high. I think we're going to have to sell some people. That's one drop of the bucket. Drop number two, Mr. Tom Koo. Drop number three particularly pains me. Trade number four sends the new guy right back out the door. What for? Oh, just a little bit more. Trade number five, well, my Miami, I, I want that. I still have too many players. Tommy Troy is going to have to go. I don't have any room. Uh, Troy, Shaver, Montez de Oca, or Quincy Stark, Fred Sable. I don't know. Something. I just got to keep trimming money and keep making room. At some point, we lost the plot. I just don't know when. Felipe Ayala, welcome to the Oakland A's, I guess. Okay. We've cashed in. I think it's time. So, looking at our top prospects, just to start yourself off with this, Kenny James, still top 10, sitting in 10th, should be up this year. Will he be? Probably not. Jackie Gordon, number 11. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Prospects. Last year we had 14. Somehow our farm system has gotten even stronger despite the fact that we continue to sell off our assets and keep our trades moving. We are under budget, but this team does not look like it did in the last several years. So, starting off with our pitching rotation, Grayson Rodriguez, our ace, with Gavin Williams, Chase Doander, Quincy Stark, and Nick Frasso with Schellenbach, or Schwellenbach, Jacob Lopez, Cruz, Hill, Rydell, Burke, and then Fred Sable is our new closer taking the place of Mason Miller. Rest in peace. I'm just kidding. Uh, so this is a completely different uh, rotation. Hopefully we'll see something different because of it. Um, kept some of the guys that were good, moved some of the other ones, kept ourselves cheap. Quincy Stark, cheap. Frasso, cheap. Dolander, Arbitration, Gavin Williams is a free agent this year, uh, and Grayson Rodriguez is a free agent this year. So these guys will move up in the rotation once we have it, because we have, obviously, Iwamara, Kenny James, Red Gold, Blackburn. We have so many guys ready to go that, uh, like, we are blocking our guys right now, as I said I did not want to do, um, but we just have too much talent. We have to do it. Uh, lineups wise also best lineup that we've ever had currently the lowest rated guy we have is our backup catcher as well as Mark Palma but Mark Palma will perform very well so Donovan Arias Joe Garcia Wyatt Langford um, is playing the wrong position so there we go Wyatt Langford Palma Murakami Colson Montgomery Soderstrom and Ayala with Jacob Wilson Norby Black and Kerrig on the bench. We are absolutely stacked this season. Considering that we are now first in contact and third in pitching, this should be the year where we should compete. However, with our luck, uh, every single pitcher that we traded away is going to be in the Cy Young race, and all of our guys are going to suck. So, let's make it halfway through the season and see if we suck.
And there we go. Finally winning a division, winning 97 games, going 97 and 65. That's even with a good slide at the end of the season in order to be able to take the uh, basically their best record in our division. And we lost a lot of games there at the end. We could have easily won 100 games this season. Um, this season ended up being a lot different than the last ones. Obviously, we made some changes and that that really helped. Uh, no, I want to look at uh, team team rankings. We were first in the league in batting average, um, second in runs, third in hits. Uh, you can see a big difference here in how things changed. Our, uh, oh, where's our, I just skipped it. On base percentage, we were third. Still not hitting the 346 metric. I think the thing that changed in this uh, sim is that the pitching got a lot better. And so ERAs and our, and our metric that we needed to hit for on base was not actually accurate. So just a good thing to kind of take a look at if you are attempting to do something like this know that mlb the show and and the pitching uh is a lot stronger so your on base metric that you need to get is generally a lot lower probably closer in the 330 range uh than the 340 range which we were pursuing um when we look at our era here we actually had the second best era in all of baseball basically what changed is we dumped every pitcher that we had this offseason and finally had a good pitching staff, and that influenced us to be able to actually have a good year here. Um, most valuable player goes to Colton Kowser, and uh, in the NL, it's Vlad Guerrero Jr. Uh, with 52 home runs. Uh, Shane McClanahan wins the Cy Young Award, and Roki Sasaki wins the NL Cy Young Award. Uh, we didn't really have anybody in competition for any awards, really. Um, uh, and I looked over in the NL, we did not see Mason Miller, uh, contend for anything. So besides, uh, a little bit of a runner up here for gold glove there and a silver slugger for the catcher, Tyler Soderstrom. Um, we didn't really see much also good, uh, silver slugger for Wyatt Langford there as well. League leaders, uh, Quincy Stark, the pitcher, lead leader in wins, and Felipe Ayala in triples. Uh, batting average, uh, really had a couple guys up there, though. So we had a good year. Um, uh, nobody, Brett Beatty was the only player to get 200 hits. If we go to home runs, league leaders were Aaron Judge with 45 and Wyatt Langford with 43 over here for us. Uh, 52 for Vlad Guerrero. If we want to move over to our saves, uh, Fred Sable was here in fifth with 43 saves for us. Um, and then on the NL side, I believe he's on the Rockies. Yeah, 35 saves for Mason Miller, 3-4 ERA. So uh, I think it's safe to say we made a good move getting rid of him and uh, saving cash going with uh, a completely different closer here. So looking at our lineups first, let's go look at our rotation. And looks like they called up nobody, really. I think this is our actual uh, pitching rotation. So... Uh, bullpen wise, Frasso 4-3-3 ERA, really good spot in the um, bullpen as a long relief role. I think him and Schwellenbeck uh, swapped throughout the season uh, and changed that. Jacob Lopez was the lefty in that spot, 3-5-9. Basically, it looks like we had a really good uh, season from a lot of guys. Uh, Sean Burke was our Rule 5 pickup last season strictly because of his contract. And absolutely phenomenal 193 era in his 37 innings this season uh two setup guys stewart and rydell neither of them really had a good season these were kind of our weak part of our lineup and then fred sable here uh, 43 saves six blown but um really good two four uh eight era grayson rodriguez returns to kind of a, a good form and a three two nine era here one two three whip uh gavin williams three five five era one two six whip uh, Chase Dolander, 4-3-1 ERA, and Quincy Stark was kind of our gem here with a 3 uh, ERA and a 1.2 whip uh, with uh, Schwellenbeck also here. Nobody really getting strikeouts. I, I wonder if that's a big part of what uh, we've had issues with in ERA-wise. Uh, we do not have a lot of strikeout guys on our rotation uh, besides our closer, and that probably has some influence here. Uh, if I look at this, you can see that Joe Garcia got sent down. He had an abysmal season for us this year. Um, hit 222, 295, had 27 home runs, so he was a good uh, amount of power, but just a bad, bad season for him. Uh, would have liked to see a lot more from him, but it is what it is. We'll call him up for the playoffs. And Palma, in his rookie season, 
only got 96 at bats, uh, was kind of just a utility guy, 292, uh, didn't end up really being uh, what we wanted him to be, but he will end up uh, still being up and we'll bring him back up for the playoffs. Uh, looking at this, uh, looks like they brought up all these guys, but uh, Cole Kerrig as our uh, backup catcher, not bad, 301, definitely not as good as McCann, but cheaper, so uh, that's why you have him. Tyler Black, uh, Kind of getting a little bit closer to where he was two years ago, but still not necessarily great. Norby in his first season, uh, nothing really special uh, for us. Just kind of a defensive guy, honestly, um, for us in our lineup. Uh, Ayala, amazing season here. Uh, had 28 stolen bases, 15 home runs, 15 triples, uh, 374 on base. Dude, just absolutely phenomenal. Great move for, for us to make that trade. Colson Montgomery, great year here. 23 home runs, 288, 369 on base. Just uh, was a great pickup when we traded him last season for DL Hall. Luis Arise, uh, remaining in the normal Luis Arise status, uh, getting a lot of homers this year as he gets up to 22. Uh, actually, just continuously getting better at the slugging. Uh, Wyatt Langford uh, was one of the best bats in all of baseball this year. Uh, was a good pickup. Obviously, I necessarily wasn't thinking about making the move for him, but we did. He will be gone at the end of this season, so uh, it was just kind of a swing. Move some prospects around. Uh, Langford, great for us this year. He will be gone at the end of the season, and we'll get a ton of money from whatever team wants him. Uh, Brennan Donovan came down to earth a little bit, uh, back down, uh, still 22 home runs, uh, 291, 356 on base, but uh, great season from Brennan Donovan uh, to play kind of a utility bat role. Soderstrom, in his finally taking over the main catcher role, uh, performed. He took he took advantage of it, 26 home runs, 298, uh, 362, one of the best seasons you can get from a catcher, hitting almost 320 plus home runs. Murakami, actually not that great of a year for him. Uh, 18 homers, 256 average, 328 on base. Uh, Jacob Wilson, uh, just a fantastic year for him. 298, 362, and this is at the bottom of our rotation, or our lineup for most of the season. So, uh, I'm going to reset our lineup, and we are going to go into the playoffs, taking on the winner of the Yankees and the Red Sox. And hopefully this can just be our season to just easily just slide right through the playoffs, preferably. Taking on the Yankees, we're going to go Grayson Rodriguez, Quincy Stark, and then Chase Dolander. They don't have a very good pitching rotation, so my hope is that we can kind of ease through here. Taking a loss in game one as Frasso gets blown up when he comes into the game uh, in the seventh uh, as we lose five to three in the next game. We win 3-0 with Quincy Stark's start, but uh, no run production until a little bit later in the game. Taking a 2-1 lead with Chase Dolander's start, and now Gavin Williams versus Henry Lalane. We lose that. That'll put us into a game five. Schwellenbach versus Hampton. I think we will uh, we will quick manage this one. Um, so uh, play next, and I think we are going to go instead. Oh no. Quick manage. Uh, we are going to go with, instead of Schwellenbeck, we are going to go back up to Grayson Rodriguez. Uh, and I think... Oh, wow. Luis. Bad. Bad start for Luis there. Um, looks like we are going to hopefully play a little bit better here. As Grayson Rodriguez luckily gets out of the first inning. As we score one run in the first... I don't like to see that. They have Gunnar Henderson. Uh, that's kind of annoying. And Austin Wells gets a two-run home run on Grayson Rodriguez as we fall down three to one in the third inning. Langford with a double. Donovan walks. Soderstrom does not get him in. Solo home run from Murakami. Come on. All right, we're going to switch. We are going to throw in... We have uh, a few guys here. I'm going to go with Cruz. Ah, uh, great. This is how I like to see it. Okay, Arias gets on base. Langford. Garcia. Pitching change. Going to Lopez. Number 
If this is how we go out, this is how we go out. But wow, this is a season to lose if this is how it ends. Pitching change. Rydell gives up a homer to Glaber. Judge, Henderson, Kiebert Ruiz scores. And I, uh, I have a feeling that this is the end of the Oakland A's. As we have been eliminated by the New York Yankees. One of the best lineups uh, that I've built, if we look at standings this past season, um, 97 and, and 65, we, we should have done better than that. Uh, we should not have lost in the first round. Um, we will sim to the end here. As the Rays defeat the Marlins in the 2029 World Series. If we go look at the awards. We traded that guy a few seasons ago. The World Series MVP is Henry Bolt. Never came up and played for us. We traded him. Wins the World Series MVP. Postseason MVP, the Rays is Josh Lowe. And on the NL side is Tomeo, Tomeo Mori. Uh, Willie Adama's there. I think we made a deal with the Marlins this offseason. So, um, and the Rays. I think if we go look at those two teams, let's go look at um, the Rays here. Oh my God, where are they? Nothing uh, significant, it doesn't look like. Um, Henry Bolt must have been prospects. Lawrence Butler and a few other guys. We were just getting closers from them. So, and then if we look at the uh, Marlins, because I know I made a deal with them as well. Zach Geloff. Don't you love to see it? Has one of his best seasons of his career, the season we trade him. I feel like I consistently have been making the wrong decisions. Uh, Sixto Sanchez, 296 ERA when we traded him. It's a great time. I'm so happy. All right. 2030. Clean up space. Goodbye, Denzel Clark. We are going to get off the chain. All right, trading pitching prospects for Ricky Tiedemann. Uh, Cutliff, uh, Stewart, I don't think Stewart played well enough. I think he's got to go. 2.4 million, not worth it. So, Tiedemann. In order to do that deal for Tiedemann, we need to clear up a little bit of space. And I found that the Giants have a two-way reliever? Yes, please. Reggie Crawford for Rydell Martinez and Steven Cruz. So, going into 2030 now, this has been a little bit longer than we would have liked. We still have a very good lineup here. Uh, we're going to be starting off this season bringing Art Blackburn up and starting him. I did bring him up during uh, September last season, and I thought he pitched pretty well. So, uh, we're going to have him come up instead of Kenny James. Uh, Kenny James might come up partially through the year, uh, especially if somebody is struggling. So, uh, rotation is going to be Chase Dolander, Quincy Stark, T Tiedemann, and Schwellenbeck in the starting lineup with Frasso going back to his long relief role here. Uh, Jacob Lopez over here if being the lefty in that position. We have a few guys there. Same guys. We brought up George Gary as well. Um, he's an 83 overall reliever, so I figured he'd be good to come up and fill in that spot that gets from Stewart and Rydell. When it comes to the lineup, uh, pretty much brought back the same lineup. Obviously, we lost Wyatt Langford um, in, in free agency. Uh, I think he signed a massive deal to go to the Mets, I want to I wanna say. Uh, and so the addition that we made was we made Walker Jenkins, trading a few prospects to get him away from Minnesota. Uh, he played pretty well there, um, and I hope that he can just do something for us. And that Joe can also have a better season this year, and these two don't uh, underperform. Uh, this is also the last year, the Munitaki Murakami uh, contract. He will be gone. Uh, he will be gone this year. Munitaka. I'm sorry. Uh, and then I believe this is also our last year with Colson Montgomery. So those two will be there. Our only signing we made this year was uh, Tyler O'Neill, uh, who is a very good on base guy. Uh, won't really play much for us, but look at that contract. So um, otherwise, we have Mark Palma still coming up. Uh, Norby still up. So guys that will end up being uh, pretty good. We have a ton of, of prospects sitting down here waiting in the wings to 
come up uh, and and take their take their place uh, for Murakami and uh, Montgomery when those guys are gone. We are literally in a position where at some point our team is too good and our pro and our system is too good to lose. Uh, we will eventually win one. I I just want it to be the one when I'm watching. You know what I mean? Uh, so top prospects again. We're actually kind of uh, clearing out some of our our. Uh, our farm here, Kenny James, still the 10th prospect. Uh, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 prospects we cleared it out we got rid of one of them so uh <laughs> going into this season 2030 we're just gonna kind of push once again we'll probably see you around playoff time see if we're competitive hopefully we are um and then we can get ourselves through we'll check in there during the draft as well and here we are 91 and 71 taking on the mariners in the division series as we lost like a ton of games in september uh in order to kind of throw away our chance at the one seed uh, in the playoffs this year. Um, so kind of a little bit disappointing to end off like that, but um, I think we had a pretty good season this year. So uh, looking at awards this year, uh, Gold Glove goes to Walker Jenkins. Uh, we really didn't compete for much this year. Aaron Judge wins another MVP. That's how many has he have? Three for him already? Uh, and... 47 home runs, Ellie De La Cruz, uh, runner up there. On the other side, Vinny Pasquatino. I think that's his second. No, he was runner up in a different year. Uh, Vinny Pasquatino for the Mets, uh, wins one over on the NL side. For Cy Young, Roki Sazaki wins another uh, with the Nationals, winning back to back. And on this side, a reliever? A relief pitcher with zero starts, Vladimir Gutierrez wins the Cy Young with a 4.55 ERA. He gave up 89 runs this year. What? I, <laughs> okay, uh, color me surprised. How? How? Shane Shane McClanahan is seething right now. At that, I okay, all right. I've never seen that happen before. All right, I've been a little lost, but okay. Uh, Bregman batting title. Uh, Pasquatino on the other side. I think Pasquatino might be getting his um, uh, triple crown. Mason Miller got up there. Look, kind of returned back to normal. Uh, One point eight four ERA over here with the Rockies, uh, as they had a good season. Uh, reliever of the year, Classe takes it again on the AL side. Rookie of the year, Daryl Torres, who they sent down um, thanks to the playoffs system. Uh, and Grant McRae, Conrad, another one of those, uh, the generational talents. Hank Aaron, Aaron Judge, and Pasquatino getting his triple crown. And we had nobody else there. League leaders, Quincy Stark, highest winning percentage. So another great year for Quincy Stark for us. Uh, nobody at the top there. Hits, nobody with 200, but man, did the White Sox infield have a lot of hits. Okay, so the White Sox might have actually finally turned this around for themselves, at least with the bats. Uh, Pasquatino, the only guy to get over 200 hits. If we go to home runs, uh, Aaron Judge with 47. Uh, Ellie right there with uh, 40. And on the NL side, Pasquatino with 47. So doesn't look like Langford ended up having a great year. Uh, so don't have to feel too bad about losing on that. Saves, uh, Enel De Los Santos on this side with Mason Miller in seventh. Uh, we swapped closers partially through the year. So, uh, George Gary, uh, uh, had 30. We also have Deanne Westbrook, who I did make a trade for after I said I was not going to. Um, uh, he was just a fantastic reliever. one 2, two ERA, um, got him for Tyler O'Neill. Uh, and uh, Fred Sable right there. So um, we we got enough saves to be up at the top, but um, Fred Sable had a bad season. So uh, nothing worth talking about there. All right, pitching rotation. Um, looks like they called up Sean Burke and moved down. Why did they do that? Okay. So for some reason, Kenny James got sent down despite having a 3.83 ERA this season. And honestly, 
knowing that a relief pitcher with a 455 ERA got Cy Young, it's crazy to me that Kenny James is not uh, was not in better contention right there. Uh, so he will. I'm going to call him back up uh, because he definitely deserves to be up. He had a great uh, season. Schwellenbach, 425. Jacob Lopez continuing his role. Blackburn kind of moved up and down a little bit throughout the season. Uh, 378 ended off pretty well. Uh, Kaiwei Tang with a 344. Reggie Crawford. I also want to show um, he had uh, three home runs too. Uh, I, I looked at one game. There was a box score because it showed him as the player of the game and he had two home runs in one game. So uh, kind of an interesting uh, player right there. Stable, bad year for him. Uh, we moved him out of, out of an important role and brought in Westbrook, and Gary did that. Uh, Dolander, two, uh, 395. Quincy Stark getting robbed on the Cy Young, 291 ERA. Definitely probably deserved that over the reliever. Tiedemann, 348. Frasso, 405. We, if we look at our lineup, um, I think somebody got sent down. Who did? Palma sent down. 280, 340, should not have been sent down, but nine home runs, pretty good for him. Guzman uh, brought him up because uh, we lost our backup catcher for a lot of the season, and he ended up being pretty good in that position. It doesn't really look like anybody else of importance uh, moved up or down, so we will go look at our team. Uh, Brennan Donovan uh, continuing to regress. Uh, honestly, I think we have to get off this contract. He is regressing quick. Uh, and so I don't necessarily think that we're going to see much good out of him uh, for the upcoming season. So he will be probably gone uh, next year if we don't win this. Uh, Kerrig injured for a lot of the season, uh, so not enough data for him. Jacob Wilson, a very, very good year for him. Uh, a little bit down from what he was last year, but played a little bit more of a of a kind of bouncing around role uh, utility simply because we started off the season really, really poorly. Uh, Connor Norby. Uh, not bad. 105 at bats, 248. Could be better. I still want to see more. Uh, Felipe Ayala, definitely a great leadoff guy. 160 hits, 28, uh, 362 on base. Tyler Black, uh, kind of continuing to improve, 33 uh, on base percentage, returning kind of similar to where he was 2027. Arias regressing a little bit back down to 284. Joe Garcia returning back to what I would expect of him. Uh, 273, 38, 338, hitting 27 home runs. Um, pretty much uh, very similar stats to last year, just with uh, a little bit more volume on them. Walker Jenkins, not necessarily a great pickup. He did not perform, was very underwhelming for us. Murakami in his last season is regressing. Uh, 258, 331 on base, so he did still perform well, but he is regressing. Um, so it's fine that we are losing him. Uh, Soderstrom, uh, 26 home runs again. He is phenomenal. We picked the right catcher, and Colson Montgomery had a great year also. 16 home runs, 344 on base. So I'm going to fix our lineups here, and then we will uh, play the Mariners. All right, let's see what we can do. Hopefully move a little bit forward through this playoff uh, and actually get through round one. Oh, uh, I thought I fixed that. Lose game one. Uh, looks like we gave up uh, all the runs in the ninth. I love to see it as we have another blown save for some reason this time by Kaiwei Tang. All right. Uh, then Chase Dolander in game two wins game two. Sean Burke coming in, getting the win uh, as we... Uh, win, scoring three runs in the ninth in order to win that game off of a what looks like would be a three-run home run by Mark Palma uh, in the bottom of the ninth. All right. Uh, so we are going to quick manage as we normally do. And let's hope that we don't uh, find a way to throw this game away as well. We are going to throw Tiedemann. This is going to be our lineup. Great. Love to see it. Down 1 0. Tiedemann's not playing bad. Thank you, Walker Jenkins. Solo home run. That will give us a 1 1 tie as Ayala and Wilson get on base for Arias with a fielder's choice and another fielder's choice. Bases loaded for Brennan Donovan. One run scores and Coles Montgomery strikes out. Okay. 2-1 lead. Three. Nice double from Ayala. Wilson scores another. 
Orion scores another. All right, 5-1. Two-run home run from Arias. I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. All right, Tiedemann's going to come out. We are going to throw in... We have a switch, then a righty. Uh, we're going to throw in Crawford. Thankfully, we have a little bit of a lead because I am not necessarily very confident going in with what we have. Crawford gets through that. Wilson gets on base there. Arise with another single to extend the lead to 8-3. And we are going to make a pitching change. I'm going to throw in... I think we'll throw in Sable. Just to get us out. And we advance uh, from the wild card to pick on the White Sox in the next round here. All right. Let's fix our rotation. I think we are going to have... Uh, I don't mind Stark. I don't mind James pitching. Honestly, I think we'll leave it as is. Uh, I would like... But I don't want to waste... I don't want to waste a start on uh, Frasso. I think we're going to go like that. Kenny James will get a shot. He had a good season. And then Stark can do game two. So, calendar. Here we go. Game one. Kenny James versus Noah Schultz. Looks like we're going to win that one. 11 to 7. We actually gave up a lot of runs in the ninth. Uh, so, 11 to 7 right there. Simulated through game two. Lose that one. So, I think in this one... Looks like uh, who gets the who who gave up all those runs? Still was Stark, so maybe we made the wrong decision there. Dolander for game three, win game three, Tiedemann game four. All right, we are now advancing to the ALDS to play the New York Yankees and get our revenge. All right, we're gonna adjust our rotation again. Looks like Frasso would be the one who is going to start here, so I am going to move it. So that we have Stark, then James, then Frasso. I actually think I will give Frasso a shot here. Because uh, Dolander and Tiedemann have been bad. Um, and just kind of hope that this will be enough here. As we go to play the Yankees. Win game one. As Stark gives up three. But we get a home run from Garcia, Murakami, and Reggie Crawford. Reggie Crawford? Okay. Wait. Reggie Crawford came in and played DH? Why? I don't know, but I'll take it. <laughs> Alright, game two. Looks like we will win that one. 9-3. We're up 2-0 against the Yankees. Going into game three. We're going to start Frasso. We lose... Um, I might have made the wrong decision. Frasso gives up five runs uh, in this game, and we score nothing. So, Dolander versus Hampton for game four. We win that one. 3-1 lead. Tiedemann versus Bayo. All right, that's a loss. We're going to have Stark versus Braxton Garrett. And we are going to advance to the World Series to play the Los Angeles Dodgers. I think if you were to consider our goal... To win one, you might be a little bit... Uh, the Moneyball series got them to the pennant. They did not make it to the World Series. Our goal was to get here. No matter what, I think this is where we are going to end this. So let's preferably end this on a bang. So I think we're going to have... They have such a great pitching rotation. They're going to have Skeens, Yamamoto, and Shohei for the first three games. I think we are going to adjust our rotation. We are going to go... James, then Stark, then Dolander, then Tiedemann. Frasso will not pitch. So this says Stark. All okay, right, so then let me adjust that. Well, no, maybe I do want Stark pitching first. So then I will move James there. We're going to do four. I'm not going to let Frasso start. Here we are. The... Dodgers. All right. Game one versus the Dodgers. Actually, let's let's take a look at the lineup first. I want you to I want to actually look at what we are facing here for the World Series. So their lineup's old. Jiwan Bay, 
Uh, Samuel Zavala uh, out here is one of their younger guys, but Kyle Tucker, uh, one of the old players on their roster, ended up having a great year this year. 37 home runs. Shohei, Mookie Betts is old. They have Kyle McCann, uh, who had a fantastic year for them. So Kyle McCann uh, coming back for his revenge. Uh, Jake Geloff, not Zach Geloff uh, for them. So Kyle McCann's revenge series here against Oakland. All right, game one, Quincy Stark versus Paul Skeens. Looks like Stark with a shutout in game one. Game two, Kenny James versus Yoshinobu Yamamoto. With the win, Kenny James. Dolander versus Otani. Looks like we are winning by one for George Gary, but he blows the save as all of our closers end up doing. So that was a chance right there, but it looks like George Gary blowing the save. How did we blow it? Um, looks like likely a, either a home run or something like that in the bottom, in the bottom of the ninth for George Gary. All right. Tiedemann versus Lodolo. That's another loss. All right. Back to Quincy Stark versus Paul Skeens. And another win. We are up three, two on the Dodgers for Kenny James. We are going to go in. We are going to quick manage. I want to see it. So quick manage. Kenny James versus Yoshinobu Yamamoto. I think. Is there anybody we should take out? No, our bats are hitting very, very well in the lineup. So here we go. Kenny James gets to the first. One run scored, Walker Jenkins. Murakami gets another one in. We have a 2-0 lead at the end of the first inning as Kenny James continues. He's safe. Giving up one run to Jake Geloff as we have a 2-1 lead going into the second. Palma gets on base. Three. Kenny James still advancing through. Luis Arias with a home run. Three. One of the first pickups we made, Luis Arias. All right. Kyle McCann. Kyle McCann kills me. I'm going to be so upset. All right. Kenny James continues to advance. Philippe A. Ayala with a home run. This is a 4 1 lead. And another one scores with Walker Jenkins. A 5 1 lead. 6 1 lead. Kenny James, one of our first picks in this series or video uh i think we are gonna have to take him out right here we are gonna go will smith i guess again i guess we'll give him a righty i think i'll give him sable for one guy that's a pitch out so kenny james makes it five and two thirds we are going to change the pitcher again I don't really want him pitching. We were going to go to Dolander. Because no matter what, if we did lose this game, we are pitching Stark. So, Arias, Garcia, Walker Jenkins, two men on base, men on second and third. Three run home run for Soderstrom. That is a 9 1 lead. Dolander, pitch. Ooh, okay. We are going to take him out. We're going to throw in Westbrook. Who gets out of that inning? Luis Patino. Patino. Mark Palma gets a double. Ayala. Strikeout. Walk. Garcia gets a single. That's 10 3. And here we go. We are going to continue to pitch with Westbrook. And that is a double play. The Athletics have won the World Series. The Athletics defeat the Dodgers. I kind of wanted to jump in, but I got a bad double play. So. So Kenny James gets the win. We finally win the World Series as we go 4-2 over the Dodgers. If we look at our World Series MVP, Mark Palma, and our playoff MVP, Larissa Reyes. Mark Palma, first round pick, one of our, one of our best players that we got uh, in the draft. And then on this, Luis Arias, one of our best pickups on that 
just amazing contract deal that we got him on. Ended up being essential to the playoffs, playoff MVP. And we, the Moneyball A's, have won the 2030 World Series. That's going to be all for this for this one. We are going to take a look at basically the stats from the franchise. Look at one of our guys have done. But uh, there will also be a part two where we're going to kind of extend beyond, see what the rest of our guys can do, some essential players, what Joe Garcia does for the rest of his career, what we can see, how many uh, stats Luis Arias pulls up for hits, uh, what these pitchers that we drafted ended up doing well for us and uh maybe even taking a look at what mason miller and brent rooker end up doing at the end of their franchises so uh or at the end of this franchise so just to kind of get an idea of what our lineup ended up being here and and, and the stats that we got Luis arias we had for five years and actually this is i should go to this transactions menu go to the roster history so 2024 this is where we can see that we took over. The only guy who was on this team before we took over was Tyler Soderstrom and Brian Boves, who never came up and never played. But <laughs> Tyler Soderstrom is the only guy really remaining. Uh, I guess Jacob Wilson as well. Uh, from this roster, as we made in our draft, we took in the first round of the first year, Mark Palma, your World Series MVP as well as getting Clark Elliott in the first round, who never even made his way up. Uh, he came up during September this season, never even saw him really. Uh, second round picks, uh, Miles Naylor came up, played last year. Art Blackburn came up this season, played pretty well, uh, and will be essential to the team as the future goes. Kenny James, absolute stud. W literally should just be nicknamed number 10 as the 10th best prospect as he was every single year, but number one in our hearts as he ended up playing phenomenally in the playoffs and was kind of essential to this run as our third round pick in the first draft other guys that we never really even came up to see julio juarez who was going to come up next year and be a lefty guy in our rotation uh 83 overall already never really saw him uh so we never really got a shot to to see what we could get out of him jacob wilson obviously a phenomenal player uh he's got one year left here that ended up being uh part of our A's roster. Tanaka, first round pick, never saw him come up. Uh, and honestly, he probably won't be up next year either. So uh, lo looking at this roster, we also have Phil Duncan Gross here, a third round pick. Kevin Alvarez, a fourth round pick. We had a lot of pitchers in this draft who ended up being pretty good. Rhett Gold also, who uh, will eventually come up. Uh, but nobody else besides the Luis Arias free agent signing in this first season ends up being a big part. Uh, Jacob Lopez, a uh, great bullpen arm for us for the last few years. Uh, in the 2026 draft, in the first round, we drafted Joe Garcia, who was our generational talent, who had good year in 2028, down year here in 2029, and a good year in 2030 as it became his team offensively. Uh, the only other guy that we have uh, that ended up being anything on this. Uh, technically, no, none of these guys ended up actually sticking around with the roster. Uh, Frank Santiago, second round pick here is uh, probably going to come up soon. And Johnny Logan is ready to come up next season as well. Uh, Daniel Iwamura could come up as well. I just don't necessarily know unless he will be a trade piece. Uh, in 2027, is where we got Brendan Donovan in the free agency. He was very good for the first three years that we had him, but uh, wasn't uh, really essential as we ended up in this playoff run. We got Tyler Black in a deal who ended up being very useful for us. George Geary, even though he had a blown save, had a very good season for his first season with us. Uh, and we still have a lot of guys here who could end up being uh, pretty special. Uh, Spencer Schwellenbeck in that deal ended up being pretty good as a arm for us for a while. Uh, and this is where a lot of the trades came in. You can see we do have a few guys who will end up making the team, but uh, a lot of this team that we have is come up in the last two years in the Tiedemann trade, uh, in a lot of our uh, Walker Jenkins trade, the Dolander trade, as we started to just need to consolidate our pieces to fit within our budget, which we did. $65 million that was underneath the $67 million. We won a franchise underneath the budget constraints of the Moneyball A's, even though I believe that probably every other team in the league is paying hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for players. So I want to thank you very much for coming along and watching us as we made our 
Moneyball A's rebuild. I know this was a very long uh, video and I thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end, uh, please leave a like. Uh, I will be dropping a part two with a just an extension to see what everybody else does for the rest of their careers. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the Moneyball A's rebuild. Thank you very much. Bigger Relevant out. Adios.